Hello, my name is Mike Driscoll, and today I'm going to talk to you about Python properties. What is a property? It's not a house or a building when you're talking about a programming language. Instead, it's about uh, making a class function into an attribute, or at least it acts like an attribute. That's how Python works anyway. Um, they also let you kind create a kind of private attribute in Python by using a getter and a setter. But are things ever really private in Python? Not really. Python doesn't really have the concept of a private method or attribute, as you can normally still access them if you know how. Now, a private attribute in Python begins with one or two underscores. If you use one underscore, you can access them directly. If you use two, there's a little bit more finagling going on to be able to access it, but you can still get to it. Um, this is not true in other, other languages that actually have private attributes or protected attributes. In those other languages like C++ or Java, uh, you can't access them if they're marked private directly. You have to access them through a setter or a getter. Speaking of which, what is a getter and a setter? So a getter refers to a function that you can use to indirectly access an attribute that is private, whereas a setter is a function that you would use to set the private attribute. Python doesn't really have this concept because you can always access and change an attribute directly in pretty much all cases. But we have a way of doing it that mimics um, what other languages do. And it sometimes makes our code clearer and sometimes it doesn't. So let's talk about creating a class with getters and setters. We'll try to copy Java or C++ in this case. So here we go. We're going to create a building class. We're going to set a private attribute. Note the one underscore at the beginning, self dot underscore amount equals none. Then to get the amount, we return self dot underscore amount. And then to set it, we can check to see, you know, is it an int or a float? If so, set the, set the value. Otherwise, print out that the value must be an int or a float and don't set it at all. Um, this is actually where setters actually become useful because you can tell Python, you know, do some error handling and don't allow the user to set the amount to whatever they want. So in this case, we don't want it to set it to strings or lists or dictionaries. We only want it to be an integer or a float. You could also use a range here. You could say, you know, if the value is greater than, you know, 100, throw an error, or if it's less than zero, throw an error. Instead, or just just not just don't let the user set it to invalid amounts. That, this is where a setter is actually useful, and where you might actually want to use it, because otherwise you could get rid of all of this, and then you could just set do you know building object dot amount equals whatever, and you're good to go. In fact, let's uh, let's go ahead and run this code, and we'll go down here and we'll just show you what happens. So let's say we want to run this. When we first start running it, it has nothing set. We try to set the amount of, to the, we get a message saying the value must be an int or a float. And so it says the current value is still none. When we go ahead and print it out because we didn't get to set it, this doesn't work. Then we set it to 5.5 .5 and we print it out and we get 5.5. .5. Now let's go back a, mo a moment and let's, let's change our code a little bit. Um, let's see, let's just change this code entirely. We'll just change this to amount and we'll get rid of our private attribute and we'll run that and go to the next screen. And now this code no longer applies. Now we can go house.amount equals 5.5. .5. And we can print whatever we want here, house.amount equals. And I need to put a, an ending string here and run that. And you can see that this works even though we no longer have that setter or getter because Python already does that automatically for you. Of course, there is a problem. Now we can set it to the. And that's where the setter and the getter is useful because it'll protect you from setting it to values that you don't want to set it to. Anyway, let's try adding a property function and see if we make our code a little bit cleaner instead of having a setter and a getter. 
So we're going to have a get amount and a set amount. And what we're going to do is we're going to change it so that amount equals property. And we'll pass this getter to the property and the setter to the property as well. What does that do? Well, it lets us do stuff like this where we can say um, house equals building. Basically, it makes the code work the exact same way. There's no change. Um, I think, yeah, this is no change. That's nice, but not exactly what we want. In fact, I think what we should be doing here is we should be saying um, amount equals the, and because I mean it still works the same, but this is how it should be. This is how it should work, and this can be amount now and this can be amount let's just copy and paste here oops and now that we've turned it into a property we don't need to call it anymore in fact you can't call it like that and then we rerun it and it still works the same so this is how it should work now now we are now we're just calling them out directly or trying to set it and it's going to when you do that it's going to call the set code when you set it, it's going to call the set code again. And you know, it just works. And now we're not having to call any functions. We can just use it the same way that we did earlier, where I showed you with a regular class. that You can set stuff, but you'll see that because we're using a property, we can protect ourselves and not let it set, get set to a string. Now that's not normally how you do it. Normally you use the app property decorator. You don't use the property function directly. And besides, I think this code looks kind of weird because you have this weird value that's sitting outside of all of the methods. So let's go ahead and use the at property decorator instead. So to make that work, you say at property and add it to an amount. I am um, then note that instead of creating the amount equals property, I was going to change the getter to def amount and return the private attribute. Then we change the setter to def amount, but note that in this case we're saying at amount dot setter to tell us that this extra function is the amount setter function. That lets us clean up the code a little bit, and now our code works exactly the same way as before, but now we're using decorators and we don't have that weird funky um, amount equals property line in our class. So, you know, that's all nice and good. But what about deleting? Can we delete our attribute if we want to? Let's try to find out. So if we run this code, oh, I have some invalid syntax in here. Let's see, what did I do wrong? Ah, yes. I somehow deleted my building. Okay, so if we run this code and then we try to delete it, so we say the house amount equals 50,000, and we try to delete house amount, we get an error. Now, of course, you could just set it to none or something, which doesn't work. We could set it to empty string. Will that work? No. Oh, I got to delete. I got to delete. All right. Can that work? No, because it has to be an enter or float. And I don't think we can set it back to none either, because it still thinks it has to be an enter or float. So how do we delete this? Well, let's make it. Let's make deleting possible. To make it possible, you create yet another method. And this time we decorate it with at amount dot deleter or whatever you have called your original property function or method. To make this work, you say at amount deleter and inside of it, you say del self dot underscore amount, which is your private attribute. Now we should be able to run this code and it should delete it. It's now deleted. If you try to access it, you'll get a different kind of error. So let's try to access amount. Um, we don't want soft there, we want house there. So now we're going to get the object has no attribute amount. That may not be what you want. In fact, I wonder what will happen. Let's see if we can change it. So let's say we want to make the house cost 60. And let's make sure that this still works. Okay, so our code isn't broken. And now we have the ability to delete the house that amount if we need to. All right, in this tutorial, I've shown you uh, what a property is, how to create one using both a function and a decorator, what setters and getters are useful for, 
and also how to add a deleter to your property. I really hope you found this video valuable, and if you have time, I hope you'll check out some of my other videos. See you next time.